We all know somebody who just got set up on their first gaming PC, but doesn't know how to quite optimize it for the games that they want to play. Well, here today we've got the five gamer settings that you should know on your computer in order to make it the most effective gaming machine possible. And number five, we have probably the most common error that I've seen gamers make when it comes to their PCs. Not a week has gone by that on Twitter, I haven't seen somebody complain about this. We all have that friend who went out and purchased a 120, 144 hertz monitor off of Amazon or Newegg and set it up, only to find out 18 months later when you stop by to check out a setup for the first time, you realize this doesn't look like high refresh rate, looks like 60 hertz, and it's because they didn't actually set it to high refresh rate mode in Windows. So that is number five. Adjust your refresh rate in Windows. This seems so simple. It feels like it shouldn't be on the list. But as we were filming this, Kyler, in order to get this screen recording, realized he wasn't even running his own monitor at 240 hertz. He had it set to 60 hertz the entire time. Work monitor. Work monitor. Why do you need a work monitor for 240 hertz? That's all we have. That's all we have. I know it seems silly, but I see it all of the time. And even somebody who works here made the exact same mistake. So check your refresh rate in Windows. Very easy to do it by going into the display settings and making sure that it's optimized for what you bought the monitor for. And number four, we have something that people typically don't tweak because they assume that their graphics cards actually come pretty optimized, but the truth is graphics cards have to balance a couple of things. They have to balance how much output they're going to give you with how loud are they going to be. And if you've ever heard a graphics card at full tilt, they can get quite loud. What if I told you that getting them louder can give you faster FPS? Yes, my friends, by adjusting your fan curve in a program like MSI's Afterburner, you can make it so that your GPU actually runs faster because a lot of the modern graphics cards utilize some sort of clock boost technology, which depends on the temperature of the graphics card. And by changing the fan curve to run at a higher fan speed at a lower temperature, it's very likely that you'll see a frequency increase on your graphics card, which will thereby give you an FPS increase. Maybe not a ton, but if you can stomach a little bit extra noise, you actually might be able to get the best out of your system. Or if your desktop is in a different room, feel free to crank that thing out to 100% the entire time, getting the fastest frame rate no matter what, but just knowing that you'll have to replace your fans probably a little bit sooner than the manufacturer intended. While you're optimizing the fan curves on your GPU for the best performance, nothing beats optimizing the air flow in your system when it comes to cooling, which is why I'm excited to tell you about today's video sponsor, Silverstone, with their brand new Shark Force 120 mil and 160 mil fans. The Shark Force fans are Silverstone's second major exclusive design, and the Shark Force name coming from the inspiration that they're taking from the shark skin-like surface, and how it majestically moves through water, which is how exactly they designed these fan blades to move through air. Allowing you to get a quieter setup while also delivering more airflow, this hasn't been possible in major manufacturing manufacturing up until recently, which is when Silverstone was finally able to come out with these Shark Force fans. Compared to an identically shaped fan, the Shark Force fan can provide up to 6% more airflow and 1 dBA less noise at the same fan speed. So you're getting more airflow and slightly quieter at the exact same fan speed. Plus it has all of the great things that you would expect like ARGB so that you can customize it how you want. And they also feature three phase six pole designs, which allow for smoother, quieter operation compared to most single phase four pole setups, making it also more energy efficient. The 120 mil fan operates between zero and 2,500 RPM, whereas the 160 mil fan operates between zero and 1,600 RPM. But even though this is 160 mil, millimeter fan, it's actually compatible with 140 millimeter fan mounts, so you don't have to worry about the sizing issue when it comes to screwing into your case. So optimize your airflow, get better noise levels, and optimize your computer with the Shark Force fans by Silverstone. Check them out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video. At number three, we have a correction to an issue that has plagued many a Windows users with stuttering in your gameplay. If you're finding that you're experiencing some sort of actual physical lag while you're playing video games, this fix might actually help you because in Windows, they have enabled a full screen optimization. So when a game takes over the full screen of your desktop, Windows is like, hey, we should prioritize this. But in true Microsoft 
fashion, that prioritization can actually lead to some miscommunication in your system and leads to dropped FPS, some stuttering, making it for a less enjoyable playing experience. And so there are ways to fix this in order to make it so that you don't have to experience this the entire time. So Microsoft used to have a way for you to turn off this full screen optimization. And if you haven't updated your windows in a little bit of time, you actually might be able to find it in your settings and then turn it off. However, if you have updated to a recent version of Windows 10 or even Windows 11, you might have to do a registry edit in order to make this happen. Now, warning, anytime you edit the registry, you are risking hurting your Windows operating system and making it so that it's irreparable. So never do it on a system with critical infrastructure and also don't stray from the instructions that are provided to you. So we'll have all of those details in the video description on how to find where to turn off the full screen optimization fix, as well as what you need to do in the registry in case this has been an issue that has plagued your gaming setup. Now, number two is the most helpful if you have a low end system. If you're rocking something that has a slower CPU, something in the four core or range of a Ryzen 3 or an Intel i3 of this generation or going back a little bit further because there's issues that can arise from having a slow CPU that can't fully communicate while the GPU is trying to run at a faster frame rate. And that is enabling GPU hardware scheduling. This can make it so that your system takes some of the tasks that your CPU is trying to run and tells it, hey, GPU, you've, you've got unallocated resources. I want you to do this, my big guy. And then your GPU takes over, making it so that you're not waiting for the CPU to get through it. Because central processing units are really good at processing things sequentially, that is in order and queuing them up. Whereas graphics processing units or your graphics card is really good at doing a multitude of things at the same time. So with GPU hardware scheduling, you can turn this on if you're on one of the latest versions of Windows, and that could potentially alleviate some of the CPU stuttering that you feel especially if you're playing video games and you notice that your CPU is pegged to 100% most of the time, this is especially for you. You don't have to be on the latest hardware, you just have to be on the latest software in order to get this going for you. And then number one, this is a setting that both AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel have all implemented because they have stated that could potentially increase your frame rate between 10 and sometimes up to 20% better FPS. It goes by many names, but the performance improvement can be there. But this is the only setting that's going to require some very specific hardware in order to run it. You will need to be not on the greatest technology, but definitely on some of the latest technologies. We'll leave links in the video description for you to be able to find out whether or not your system is compatible, but this feature is called resizable bar as a general term. It has many different terms with how you have to turn it on. AMD likes to call this smart access memory. Nvidia calls it resizable bar. The motherboard that we actually tested this on is called clever access memory for whatever reason. But essentially resizable bar will take the memory that is on your graphics card and instead of feeding it to the CPU sequentially, it'll just dump it out in a fire hydrant type style saying, hey, have access to whatever you want, whenever you want, and now you can play video games better. And part of this is because modern video games require more video RAM or the memory that's on your graphics card, which leads to issues where the game is trying to pull memory from the graphics card, but it can't get enough, and so it slows down. Resizable bar changes the prioritization of that and makes it so that you can actually have the memory at your full disposal. And according to several benchmarks that AMD, Intel, and Nvidia have put out, it can actually lead to substantial FPS increase. Now this setting, you have to tweak in your BIOS. This is not something that's just available in the Windows settings. So if you have compatible hardware, what you have to do is go into the BIOS, make sure that you're updated to one of the recent BIOS that actually support this. And then typically it's found in the settings around the above 4G decoding. Now on our motherboard, as I mentioned, it was listed as clever access memory, but if you look over in the description, it describes it as resizable bar. So on your motherboard, it might be called something separate. So just keep an eye out for the descriptions in order to make
make sure that it actually aligns with the setup that you have. So resizable bar requires modern hardware, but it can lead to the best performance improvements of the things that we've mentioned. You can use it on an RTX 3050, like we did in our example. So you're not necessarily tied to having to use it on something like an RTX 3090 Ti, even though we also have one of those. Flex. So on NVIDIA, it's only supported on the RTX 30 series. On AMD, they have their own specifications. And on Intel, they have said that they will support resizable bar on their, their GPUs for both Intel systems as well as AMD systems. So let me know which of these settings was most helpful for you to get faster frame rate on your gaming system. These have been the five gamer settings that you should check out in your PC. And big thanks to all of our Patreon supporters as well as our Floatplane members who have made this video possible. Their names are are on the screen right now and we absolutely love the snot out of them get subscribed for more helpful tips on your pc it's like we're tech tips of some kind brett tech tips that has a ring to it